Hello viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel. It is still Dr. Nogia Agata for a greater mathematics experience. Okay, we will continue in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mighty God, the author of wisdom and understanding, be with us, O Lord. See us through, O Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. So, my viewers, I will call you again once more. We are going to look at set operation. Set operators, how they work, how we use it. Okay, haven't discussed sets. Haven't discussed that we need to do this in order to see what we can do with set. In order to work with set, we have to work with them using the operators. We have these operators, we have this as union, union denoted by this. By union of two sets, say A union B, we mean the particular set that contains all the elements in A, and all the elements in B. That is, the element in that set is those elements in A and those, uh, those, of, uh, those of them in B. Without repetition, because there is no need, repetition does not count in set, you know that. Okay? So, mathematically we'll write that A union B It is the set as such that X is in A or X is in B or in both. You can put in both. Okay? Good. We can see it pictorially. If this is A and this is a set B, A union B is this set, are these ones. In A union B. Hmm? If A is equal to A B and B is equal to B C, A union B is equal to the set A, the set that contains A B. And C. Okay? A, B, C. That would be A union B. Now, intersection. What do we mean by intersection of two sets? Remember, remember that the union, you can talk of union of three sets, four sets, five sets, depending. You can talk of that. Okay? And it is that particular the, the resultant set that contains all the elements in those uh, sets. Okay? Now, intersection. We say A intersection B. By A intersection B, we mean the set X such that X is in A and X is in B. So it is that set that contains those elements that are in A and also in B. That's the, the element that is common in the two sets. Remember, it is not limited to two sets. We want to begin with intersection of two sets. And have intersection of three sets. If you're talking of intersection of three sets, you mean what is that particular element that is common in the three sets? Okay? Good. And we have Picturally, intersection, if this is A and this is B, A, B, the intersection is this, what they have in common. What they have in common. Okay, looking at this example, 
a equal to uh, this the set the a comma b and b is the set b comma c we can talk of a intersection b here and a intersection b here will be what they have in common and what do you think what can you say that they have in common is b they have b in common so the intersection a intersection b here is uh, equal to is equal to the set that contains uh, b okay a intersection b using this example is equal to what b all right now if you have sets and their intersection is empty we say that the sets are disjoint or that they are mutually exclusive okay you have sets okay you have say let's say a equal to a comma b and you have another set say c equal to b comma r okay observe that a intersection c is empty a intersection c is empty okay a intersection c is equal to empty set or you write this hmm? this or this so we say that a and c are disjoint or that they are mutually exclusive and picturally we have we have it like this we have it like this this way c is there so they have nothing in common they are not touching each other they are mutually exclusive okay now we talk about complement of a set complement of a set now you talk about complement of a set in relation to the universal set okay the complement of a set denoted say say a we love a we use it eh? you can use anything you like but let's continue to use a eh? say denoted as this complement oh, or you can write or oh, a complement you can use either okay is equal to it is equal to those elements in the universal set that is not in the a is not, not in the set a okay so mathematically you can write this a complement is equal to s such that x is in the universal set and s is not in a such that x in the universal set and x is not in a that is a complement of a a okay for example let a let the universal set be equal to a b c and eh? and let a let a be equal to b okay observe that a complement is equal to a comma c because there there they are the elements in the universal set that is not in the in the set in question the set in question okay and for complement if you want to show it pictorially sorry let us show it here pictorially you use a rect we always normally use rectangular uh, block to represent the universal set okay so you now have uh, your a here use small circle to represent a set inside a inside the universal set okay that's your a then the complement now is this one those ones that are in the universal set that are not in the set okay now we talk about difference of two sets difference of two sets say a difference b a difference b what is a difference b we mean those elements in a that are not in b those elements in a that are 
cannot mean B. S, it is so, S such that X is in A and X is not in B. X is in A and X is not in B. Okay? Now, let us use this. Let's use this example here. A is equal to this set, B is this. What is A different B? Those elements in A that is not in B. So what are the elements in A that is not in B here? The elements in A that is not in B here is what? Is this. This is B. This is here. It's not here. So that's A different B is this. Is this. Okay? So using that, now we have that A different B is equal to A. What of B difference A? B difference A. B difference A. That's the element in B that is not in A. The element in B that is not in A. I think it's only this one now. Is it not? That's the only one. The single thing says C. Single thing C. Okay? Yes. We are equipping ourselves. All right. Now, let us uh, draw a three diagram that will depreciate the relationship in the number system that we've already studied. Having equipped ourselves with these ones now, we have this number. And that the complex number is made up of two parts, the real part and the imaginary part. Have the imaginary, I'll have the real part, the real. Now, the real part, we find out that they have the rational and the irrational, irrational number. Then when you come to rational and the rational, you find out that the rational, you have the fraction, you have the fraction, you have a, a integers, you have integers. That's whole number. Now, coming to whole number, we have the negative whole number. We have zero. We have the positive uh, whole number, which is the same as our natural number. Now, we look at this. The relationship here is that this. This, this what anyone under is a superset of this. This, uh, this is a subset of this. So natural number is a subset of integer. Integer is a subset of rational number. Observe that rational number and irrational number, they are mutually uh, exclusive. They are disjoint. They don't have anything in common. All right. But the union of these two, the union of these two, gives us uh, this one, the real, the real number. Now, the real number, real number, uh, 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 we now union. That is, real number, we form the real part of uh, the complex number and the imaginary we now have the imaginary part of the complex uh, of the complex number the imaginary part and the real part that gives us that is the complex number now observe that the complex number complex number union real we give you the complex number the union will give you the superset if you have a, 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 a superset, a superset and a subset. Union of a superset and a subset gives you the superset. Why the intersection of a superset and a subset gives you the subset? That, that is why this and this now, union, we give you this. Why the intersection? We give you the set of real. Okay? Now, intersection of this and this, real and the rational, will be the rational. The union will be the real. The intersection of rational and irrational, we have said, is disjoint, is empty, okay? But the union gives us this. Observe that the uh, natural number is a subset of uh, integer, so the union of natural number and integer will be integer. Why? Integer and the fraction will give you the rational. So it goes like that, okay? Now... With what we have said now, we have really equipped ourselves to work 
more problems on set. So we are going to stop here today and in our next video we are really going to use these uh, instruments to work more problems, to solve problems on set. Thank you. We thank God for being with us. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not done so. Okay? Hope to see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye.